hey, this is Bernard Laws, and I want to walk you through the 1.6 open source update to Label Studio. Today, we'll explore object tracking for video annotation, and our agenda will cover project creation, controls and features, interpolation-based object tracking, and finally, resources where you can find more information. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, out of the box, Label Studio enables you to annotate text, images, audio, HTML documents using any number of annotation tasks like classification, regression, tagging, spanning, pairwise comparison, object detection, segmentation, and so on. Today, I'm pleased to announce the availability of video annotation. Out of the box, the video annotation pre-built templates include classification, tracking, and timeline segmentation. Today, we'll focus on object tracking. And we'll jump into the annotator view in order to see the features firsthand. Most prominently, you have the video viewport, the video controls, the frame controls, the zoom controls, and the timeline. There are several pre-built zoom controls for zooming in, zooming out, zooming to fit, or zooming to 100% resolution of the, of the video. Using the shift and the mouse key, we can pan around the image. The video controls allow you to play the video as well as navigate between frames, as well as navigate between keyframes, which we will go to later. We can also hide and unhide the timeline. Now, let's explore what I mean by the timeline. The timeline here, we're able to jump into different frames just by clicking into the timeline. We can also explore uh, different frames by selecting a particular frame in the frame control. Now, if I wanted to, let's say, annotate a particular uh, person, object, target in this scene, I'll find that, that target in the scene by going to a frame where the target is visible. Here at the first frame, I want to annotate this target here. So what I'll do is I will select the label I want to use, and I will draw a bounding box around the target. What that does is it creates a keyframe for the target. And you notice that this polygon will exist for the entirety of the video. So as I move through the frame, I notice that the target is no longer within the frame. So what I would do is I would move the bounding box to the frame that I want to create as a new keyframe. And I would continue stepping through frames. And I would again move the bounding box around the new location of the target. And I would continue doing so until, in this case here, the target suddenly uh, goes under occlusion from this uh, gentleman who is standing in front of the target. Now, what you're seeing here are keyframes created every time I adjust the bounding box. And as we can see here, she's no longer going to be seen in just next frame or so uh, once she's essentially behind or under the side of this gentleman. So what I can do is I can go to the frame and I can now toggle the interpolation. Now let's see what the interpolation has produced for us. Starting from keyframe zero, if I were to play this video, we can see that the bounding box is interpolated between the keyframes so that it actually tracks the target. I can then navigate to the next keyframe by clicking on go to next keyframe. Now, because the uh, target will be will go under inclusion behind this gentleman, what I can do is I can continue moving the frame to where she's no longer going to be uh, behind the target, and then I can start. I can re, uh, recreate a new keyframe to identify when she becomes, when she returns back to view. So here, I'll toggle key point and I will toggle the interpolation of the key point. We can see here that now we've got a keyframe here and we'll move the bounding box to where she is now. Adjust it and again, move through the frames. Adjust again. 
and again move to the frames. And finally, adjust one last time before we again toggle the interpolation. So if we were to now play this from beginning to end, we'd see tracks her all the way through the end of the video. Now you notice that the tracking is not just positional, but also size. What I mean by this is we can create an another annotation, let's say of this person here. And as this person gets closer, of course, not only is position changing, but also size. So we would increase the size of the annotation. And we continue. And again, we see the size increase. And we'll stop here. And we bring this back to the zero frame. And if we were to play this, we can see both characters being tracked, one size changing. And here we have object tracking for video annotation. Thank you.